Hello all, I'm Julia and I'm here to talk about some of the data insights tips that led to my perfect GMAT score. DI is an interesting section because many of the question types are new to the exam and overall it covers an impressive variety of things. In fact, I ended up taking this section first on my exam specifically because I thought it would serve well as a warm up for both quant and verbal and it did work as intended. A lot of my tips are pretty section general or exam general, but it's more difficult to do that with DI because the topics tested require such diverse approaches. That being said, I do have a couple of general DI tips. Get familiar with the different question types, their layouts, how to manipulate them via sorting or switching tabs. Get familiar with the calculator, especially if you're like me and you already use a tin key a lot because it's not as smooth of a transition as I would have expected. Know that there will be too much information and most of DI is finding the relevant bits and ignoring the rest. No partial credit. So if you don't know one of the answer parts in a question, do your best to make an educated guess, but don't waste a bunch of your time because if you're not gonna get them all, then you're not gonna get any credit. And estimation is very useful in this section in particular. Now let's talk about the different question types and my tricks for them. Data sufficiency is probably the one that you'll be most familiar with and the one that will have the most practice opportunities. I did have an issue here that was tricky for me. I kept doing this thing where either I would think I needed both statements but the information that I learned from the first statement could also be gleaned from the second, so I only needed the second. Or I think that something that was clear from the first statement was clear the whole time, and then I'd feel like I only needed the second statement, but I really needed both. The solution that ended up working for me was to write the ramifications of statement one on the left of my notepad, write the ramifications of statement two on the right of my notepad, and then write the ramifications of both combined like below that in the middle. That way I had kind of a visual reminder of where each bit of information came from. In general, write down more than you think you need to write down. On multi-source reasoning, I'd read the headlines of each tab and the access info before I read the questions. And that was a good balance of getting the layout of the info without getting bogged down by how much there was. Then I'd take it question by question and be able to find things a lot quicker. Kind of the same thing with reading comp where you don't need to memorize every single title or date, but you do need to be able to find them again quickly in the passage if they come up in a question. Multi-source reasoning question types just take a while too. I only had one in my DI section, which is pretty common. Pacing is strange on DI anyway because of the variance and how much info each new question will present to you. So remind yourself that it is a game of averages and try not to check the clock too obsessively after every single question because that's just going to make you anxious and waste extra time. Graphs are weird because they can be easy or hard and it's not always immediately apparent which way one will go. I have read very easy to interpret graphs and then gotten to the questions and they've been ridiculously demanding. And I've also run into graphs that look just insane and intimidating at first glance but then I get to the question and it's the most basic thing that could possibly be asked and it takes no time. The more that you practice interpreting graphs, the better you will get. Also, be sure you're tracking mistakes so you can see if you're making easily remedied ones, like not reviewing the legends, access labels, or graph titles enough. I recommend the New York Times What's Going On in This Graph website for some bonus graphs to practice interpreting. On two-part analysis, the questions cover a lot of different things, but I found that they're usually not too difficult mathematically. They're more likely to be difficult to keep straight from each other. 
I can't tell you how many times I found the answer to the first part and then spent several minutes like looking for the answer to the second part and it wasn't in the list only to realize that the second question wasn't a twin of the first as I'd assumed but something entirely different. I've also definitely mixed up the two answers and I know I'm not the only one because TTP's common mistakes for two-part analysis does mention mixing up the answers so please be careful with that. For me, these were the question types in DI that I most prioritized double checking my work on to make sure I was answering what the question asked and also where it was asked. On table analysis, the trick is basically to sort by the right columns and not to include totals in your measures of central tendency accidentally. These are the ones that I most often use the calculator on, but I estimated on about as many as I hard calculated answers to. It really depends on the answer choices given, which will be superior, so always review those up front and save yourself some time if you can. Um, check for the spread between the given answer choices, and the closer it is, the more likely you'll need to do some explicit calculations. DI is newer than quant and verbal, but I kind of choose to see that as a way to level the playing field because no one will have as much experience on this. You can use it as an avenue to showcase your adaptability, initiative, and resourcefulness. Enjoy this part of your academic adventure and I wish you all the luck in the world.